being able to um, be a role player in a company is very valuable, but it's easier to replace if it's not bringing in money Mm -hmm. because money solves most ills in businesses, right? Like you can, if you have enough money and you have an issue, you can hire a consultant. You can like have the money to fix the issue or whatever. But um, if you acquire that skill set, or like like Joe was talking about this particular creative clubhouse, if you are going to bring in money to it, it may be a little harder for me to to let that go. Mm-hmm. You know, because not everybody's gonna go get the money. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If you're the only person, once you hit a certain level, so in the beginning of your company, maybe at least to your six figure mark, you may be the only person creating revenue streams for your company. And that's totally fine. And that could even go up to like a $250,000 mark, right? And I'm just using that as a mile marker. This is not to say at 250, you need to hire a team. It's just a marker. It kind of happened with me and my business. You can build your business as a solopreneur up to six figures. But then once you hit that 250 puts you in a different tax bracket, we got to start creating different streams of income. You got different issues, other things that you have to be concerned with. The more money you make, the more money you need to make, right? And so then it becomes a a point, a perspective of if you're the only person in your company generating revenue, then you are just you away from the death of your business. All right, listen, every single week, every episode, you hear me talking about the morningmeetup.com. It's the community. Let me show you what's happening here. Every single morning, Monday through Friday, there's 400 plus people on a Zoom call, right? We're learning, we're talking, we're growing together, and this is you. There's all these people here. It's all these people in the morning meetup, hundreds of people reading books, growing, we get together quarterly. It's amazing. And for some reason, you just keep looking at, just go to themorningmeetup.com and get in the circle. And then you'll be like way happier. Just the morningmeetup.com. Let's get back to the episode. Welcome to another edition of Social Proof Podcast. Donnie's here, preoccupied when it's go time. My name is Donnie Wiggins. I am uh, super excited to be here on the Social Proof Podcast this morning, here with my uh, not so considerate, not so considerate yet highly illustrious co host, David Shane. Very illustrious. Are you happy to be here today? And Joe was playing I'm Coming Out. Jo- that was just theme Joe song. was definitely. <laughs> no, is that what you listen like when you first? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, Mike, check. Is this thing on? <laughs> when you oh, tell the DJ, like, what you want to come out to? You know what? I'm coming out. I think you should do a it video with I the survived. minis out. And I'm coming out. No. I think that would Absolutely. be hard. My DMs are a little wild, weird right now, so no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, uh, Y'all, we have this energy this morning because David was singing You Won't Break My Soul. Shout out to Beyonce. You Won't Break My Soul. Get it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was telling the morning meetup about this conversation that I have. And uh, shouts out to K Bachi. K Bachi put together this dinner. Um, Milano was there. Corey was supported by college. There are a bunch of like influential people. You didn't mm-hmm. get an invite, right? About influence. <laughs> so I'm talking to this guy <laughs> across from me, and I forgot his name. I forgot his name. But the song "You Can't Break My Soul" or "Break My Soul" came on, mm-hmm. and and for some reason I I just asked the table the question like, "Yo, have y'all listened to Beyonce's album?" Because I haven't listened to it. And the guy was like, across from me, he's like, "Yeah." I was like, "Do you like it?" He said, "Well, I mean, yeah, I'm I'm gay though." And I was like, "What do you mean? I don't understand." He said, "I'm I'm gay. The the album was made for me." He's like, "Yo, we listen to that type of music." And I said, there's gay music? He said, that house music, the like with the, the beat and all that? Yeah. I had no idea. And he's like, he told me that that album, like even Beyonce said, yo, she made it for gay people. She made it for her gay uncle mm. and his crowd. So she has an uncle who's gay and I think he was like designing some of her things at one time. Mm. And um, because of all of the, you know, injustice that she believes he's faced or that not even that she believes, but that he has. She wanted to honor their community and she made it in honor of her uncle and his community. She said that. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I I didn't know. It was like, yo, there's gay music like that they identify with. But that's the way he said it. Like, yo, this this album was made for my community. 
And yeah. this is the this is the music that we listen to as a unit. I thought that was mm-hmm. really cool. So. Yeah, and I, I don't I don't know. I think it's certain. I don't know. I think it's for a certain type of gay community because there are people who I know who are gay who listen to the same exact stuff that I listen to. But there's definitely that community that's super like extra and flamboyant. And this is their theme sure. album, not yeah. even theme song. But that leads me to like, I can listen to it, right? Like, yeah, I, I'm I'll in there my- feeling it. <laughs> You won't break I'll the be in my car, like, <laughs> and I'm bopping too hard to the new Beyonce. Hey, and so, pull up and at the light. And Atlanta, like, Ooh. <laughs> you vibing a little hard. I won't What's break happening? your soul, but I'll break something. The, the original break your soul is probably I'm coming out, right, Joe? <laughs> Joe, that's the original, right? I'm coming out. It's the same. Listen, I don't think break my soul. For clarification, not break my soul, but for, the album for clarity, because this conversation get low left right now. <laughs> All right, let's, yeah, okay. let's get let's, started. Yeah, we're, let's get started. We're actually talking about something really important today. Yes, create a movement. But one big lesson from the week so Jesus. far. One big lesson for the week. Um, did Dre give you my update yesterday? About what? Mm. If you know, you know. Um, one big lesson from the week. One big Yes. Lesson. She did. Yeah, y'all be gossiping about me and stuff at home. No, I told her that she need because y'all been y'all was gossiping for mad long yesterday, and I told her y'all stop gossiping. Well, so I had I had. Is a, this a public conversation? It is not. Okay. Um, my personal, me and Dre gossip privately about you know some some things that I'm doing and di- and working with, and uh, we we gossiped all day about that. In fact, anywho, um, one thing, one lesson that I learned this week is to. It's consistency. Like, and it's not like a major wow, 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 but really, really consistency. Consistency pays off. However, the lack of consistency is absolutely detrimental. If you have a routine in all areas of your life, you need to create a routine. So there are things that make you feel really good. You need to implement those in, and incorporate them into your consistency or into your daily routine so that you're consistent at it. But for case in point, We work on our jobs over and over and over again or in our careers over and over and over again. And you go from entry level to executive level. You're amazing at it. You decide to start working on your body. You don't like how you look in the mirror and you're doing it consistently over and over and over again. And you start to love how you look in the mirror. But if you fall off of that consistent routine, you're kind of like back in David's boat where, you know what I mean? You're wearing oversized t-shirts and stuff because you don't really this is One large. of us are consistent. I think I'm from large to extra large. This is actually That's large. an extra large fit. That's but only like, because they gave me an extra large. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, when you have consistency, like in the gym and working out, you start to love the results that you see. But when you fall off constantly, stop, stop looking for something. Stop pointing at me, yo. Like, when, you, when you're constantly falling off, it ends here. Yourself, so, yo. <laughs> so in any area of your life, whether it's your spiritual journey, your physical body, your career, your relationship, the things that work that make you feel at your best in all areas of your life, consistency can either help you thrive or the lack of can help it die. Mm, that's a good lesson. That's a good lesson. Uh, my lesson is um, just being more intentional about the things that I'm looking to build. And starting this Monday, we're having a daily team meeting. We were doing it once a week. But this, like, starting this week, every day, Monday through Friday, we're having a daily team meeting just to be intentional, to see what's going on, what needs to be talked about. Because I find myself talking to everybody individually throughout the week when, like, there needs to be, like, some transparency of knowing where we were yesterday and what happened between yesterday and today. What what time do you do those meetings? It'll be 9.05. Okay. Hey, hey, good morning, team. So I know that we were talking about implementing weekly team meetings on a regular basis again, but David is sitting here with me on the podcast and he's doing now morning team meetings, uh, daily team meetings for how long? Maybe 30 minutes. 30 minutes. We don't have that kind of time, but we will meet every single day for 15 minutes just to touch base because he won't outwork me. Let's get it. I'm technically still going to be out working. You're doing 15, I'm doing 30. <laughs> so yes, um, being intentional. And I think really when I told, when I told the squad too, it was like with it. And it was like, yo, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Like they, we, we are all intentional on growth 
I love it. And can we talk about what we talked about yesterday, Joe? Yeah. No? Yeah. Would it be uncomfortable? No, not at all. Okay, cool. Joe so, is never embarrassed. Uh, he walks around with his middies out. This is a hard to embarrass <laughs> man, okay? Period. Hard to embarrass. So, it is, right? Mm-hmm. So I was talking about when we went to the um, Grant Cardone joint, the energy and intensity that, you know, I, I got a chance to see. And the guy with the mic is running full speed just to get everybody. And Joe was like, hey, man, I ain't like that. Like how you said that. I feel like I worked really, really hard. And uh, you want to, ex- okay, explain your feelings. Yeah, so I felt when, this is loud. Um, so I felt when Dave was having this conversation with us about uh, Grant Cardo's team versus our team, I looked at myself personally, not the whole team, because I felt, one, I've been working with David the longest. Two, I felt like, you know, I have gone the extra mile and everything for him. And I felt like it was a slap in the face to me. Mm. You know, I was like, dang, like, five years in this joint, Started off working for free, then like part time, then full time, and this is like the thanks I get. Mm. So I felt type of way, but I don't want to come to him the same day because like there was like a lot of emotion with that, and I don't like mm-hmm. pushing my emotions off on people when they're not clear emotions. So I took some time, like day to think about it, and I knew I, of course I'll see David the next day because he's always here and mm-hmm. we're always here. So um, <clears throat> we sat down, we talked about it, and he gave his explanation of it. I gave my explanation of it. And it was like, I liked the way the conversation ended because there was no hard feelings. Mm. Okay. So you became emotionally hijacked in the moment because you saw him talking directly at you instead of at the whole team. Well, it was directly at the whole team, but I took it personal because it was like, I feel like I go to bat for days. Like, you know, I gave him the example of like the, the last minute EYL situation we had, to, we had to pull off and then I had to jet from EYL to... Invest fest and set up the invest fest by myself, and I was like, like that's the stuff I do on a regular. Yeah, and I was like, you know, dang, like, do he not see? Like, am I not valued? Do he not see this? Like, what's going on? So, did the message that you delivered apply to Joe? Absolutely. Okay. So, so we and we talked about it. Like, I'm like, yo, everyone's doing well, but I'm like, do you feel? Do you like? Do you feel like you're giving it your all? Like everything, of course. Yo, there's some days. You don't got to do nothing at all, like, throughout the week. If I'm out of town or I'm or we don't got nothing going on, some days I don't call Joe at all for anything. So when we have situations like, yes, we come together as a team and we get stuff done, mm-hmm. for sure. I'm proud of that. But we're not operating at full intensity. Mm-hmm. He's not. And I was telling him, I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not going as hard as I can. So I know you're not going, like, to the 10, to your potential. So my point is, he was like, yo, I felt, I, I felt offended. I said, good. We should, like, we, we all got to evaluate ourselves. We all got to look at ourselves. And if we feel like we're reaching our full potential, then there's probably something wrong. Like, we always need to continue to drive. I, I'm very grateful for everybody on my team. But if, if, I'm not, if I'm not, like, pulling the team, if I'm not, like, stretching the team, and we feel like that our, like, we are, we are very lackadaisical company. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Very. You are. There's not a lot of intensity in the whole company, period. Yeah. So I'm saying there's nobody, including myself, mm-hmm. that is really going to the max with like that level of energy. So mm. so from an from an actual tangible, actionable perspective, mm-hmm. what has to happen? So um again, operating with intensity is everything. I have to run the calls with more intensity and more energy, more excitement. I think we, like, I, I want to just start to drive immediate execution on all the things that we operate in because we are, sometimes it takes a couple of days and I'm not saying, I'll tell Joe like, yo, can you um, call this person, do this and do that? He'll knock them all out for the day. Mm-hmm. But I think, and I was, I was explaining like to the whole team, your, what's that? Is that my phone? Um, I was explaining to the whole team. It's one thing to say, okay, these are the things that I need you to do and you do them. Great. But going to another level of intensity, and this is what we get paid more money for, all the stuff that I'm not saying to do, all the stuff that I'm not saying to get done, like, like really owning it and going the extra mile. So when I was working at the Cheesecake Factory, I had this realization that I wanted to be better. 
and I wanted not, it wasn't for the job so that I can make more money, but I'm going to clean the tables. Like we do this, um, what was it? It's called side work where you got to clean the tables and refill the ketchups and all that kind of stuff. And I do just enough for the shift leader to check me out and I can go home. But I started to adopt another mindset. Like I want to do all the stuff that they're not asking me to do. I'm trying to implement systems when I'm a shift leader for everybody else that they're not asking me for because I'm operating with intensity and I want to create so much value that it's not easy to replace me. Mm-hmm. It's easy to replace somebody who says, hey, I need you to do this and they do it. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, I, there's a certain amount of money that I pay and I'm like, yo, Joe, I want to pay you $250,000. But it, it's going to have, like you have to be somebody and this is everybody. You have to be somebody who adds so much value that I don't want to lose an extra million if I lose Joe. So yeah. I'll give him 250. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I think it's just all of us. And again, I wasn't, I wasn't pointing out anybody on the call. I'm not saying, Reese, you suck. Kashif, step it up. Joe, you're terrible. I wouldn't say none of that. I'm saying we, I'm, I'm looking for at least the conversation to us to think, how can I do whatever I'm doing with greater intensity? So make it so hard to replace yourself. Yeah. That when... Do you have anything, Joe? When I feel like it'll take like five <clears throat> people to replace me. Mm. I feel that way. Good. Mm-hmm. But to, if I was to leave or you say, yo, it's over with Joe, I think you would have to, to replace me, you would need about another five bodies. Mm. Like, that's how I feel. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Do you agree? Nope. Only, I mean... So Joe is dope because he's like he's like a catch all. He just kind of does all the stuff that needs to be done, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's not necessary. What would you say? It's a specialized skill set, or you just make yourself available? I feel like it's like a combination of both. I made myself available, and I have a specialized skill set, so I'm very well versed in a lot of things. For sure, like project management, event management, all that stuff. Like. I'm just good at that stuff. I know I, I can do it because I've had the experience from college and corporate America, nonprofit, and all that type of stuff. Yeah. Specialized skill set? Say it again. Is there a specialized skill set that you're saying you feel is That's irreplaceable? What you're saying, yes. Yeah. What's the, what's the skill set? Project management, event management, all that stuff. So, can I find somebody to manage projects? Do yeah. I need five people to? Event managed project? I think it's not projects, but it's more so like all of the, a combination of everything that I do for you within the, all your companies. For sure. So it's like I manage a shirt company, I manage the podcast, I manage this building now, I manage the e complex now, I manage, you know, various projects on David Shan's LLC. So it's like if you look at it in hindsight, those are like various jobs for a single person per, per thing I just mentioned. Mm-hmm. versus, you know, somebody like myself, a single individual handling four or five tasks or job descriptions. It's, I feel like, you know, that's like very irreplaceable. Gotcha. Um, okay. So let me say this. I think you're incredibly valuable to the organization. For sure. For sure. For sure. But mm-hmm. everything that you just said you do really is a catch-all role, mm-hmm. right? And the reason that it's a catch-all role is because you have been here with David for the longest and you've been growing with him. So as the needs grow, it's like, Joe, do this. Joe, do this. And the role was so part-time at first that in his mind, you got the time to do this, this, this. And you kept saying, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Whether there was more compensation or no compensation uh, added to it, or you also maybe didn't speak up and say, hey, this is like a three-person job. Let me just sit in this zone very well so you can recognize my value in this area mm-hmm. very well instead of kind of being like general, right? Yeah, we Dave and I actually talked about that yesterday towards the end of our conversation, like me honing in more on just one specific thing instead of me just doing all the other things. So that was, he was like, you know, well, that's something you have to think about and really just come back to me with. Yeah, but it, it, it really isn't. It's something that you have to think about. Listen, if I was going to teach you how to make a million dollars, would you give me 10000 like if I had a course teach you how to make a million dollars and you're po- positive, you're going to make a million dollars, would you give me 10000 Of course you would. It's no-brainer, right? So in a calendar year, we make seven figures with the podcast. 
But there's 21 things that I extracted from that that you're going to need to launch a podcast. But I only got time to give you three right now. One is you need a distribution platform. The distribution platform is what you upload your podcast to. That platform sends it to Spotify, Apple, Google Play, so that your supporters can actually listen to your podcast. You're also going to need a microphone. You need a really good microphone so it's crispy audio. And three, you need an income strategy. This is not necessarily a hobby, unless you're going to make it a hobby. But I can teach you how I made the seven figures with these 21 things. Now, the good news is you don't have to give me 10,000. My ebook is only 37 bucks, okay? So listen, go to podcastebook.com and get the 21 things that you need. And I I can explain it in detail, all the things that you need, okay? Podcastebook.com. Let's get to the episode. What does the company need? And does the team that I have right now align with the company's needs, right? So it's not up to your team member to tell you based on the culture you've created in this situation, it's up to you guys to identify, hey, here's where I can step up. But the proper way to do it is say, hey, this is what the company needs. Let me put people in place. Let me identify who I have on the team right now that can be in this place. So you're absolutely replaceable and everybody should understand that you are absolutely replaceable. Even if you're really, really great at something. The key is to make yourself really difficult to replace. The key is to make it so that you're so valuable in your role that the person who has to even think of replacing you is up at night. It's a pain point for them. They're sick about this conversation. They don't want to have it, right? You're replaceable because at the pace that the brand is growing now, David can really sit down and say, and he should, I need some really specialized people with this specialized skill set in this role. Because if I have a whole bunch of generalists in this role doing it at this level, and these are the results, if I get specialists in this role, then it's going to go at an even higher level. So in that case, in his mind, he's willing to now, like you said, it's a five-person job. He's willing to just go out and find the five people. Mm -hmm. So now David has given you the permission, which he shouldn't have, but he's done it. So now it's up to you to say, where do I fit in where I am maximizing my best level of skill set and I am, it's an actual value add that's not replaceable. It's a need. It's not just what I'm good at and let me do this for your company, but this is what I'm good at and the company needs it. Let me stay in that lane. So my position, I'm not replaceable easily in this role. Okay. Yeah. Go for it. Where's the mic? We got the, the camera and the mic together? Yep. All right, go for it. Um, with what Donnie just explained, uh, where where's the line? Like, where, where do you draw the line if an individual is specialized? They do what they do well, very well, but they don't know your heart. Mm-hmm. Like, they can't connect with your heart, so they, they can execute the task like crazy and maybe generate more money that might be the goal but they just don't know your heart and then like you you run into something because they haven't connected with you not emotionally it's just the heart of the brand that's that's all yeah so this is this is going to align with what we're talking about today about creating a movement because in a in a company especially in a small business the movement is first internally with your team and then externally with your clients and customers or for those of you who are solopreneurs is first externally with your clients and customers, and then you're going to create a a movement within your team. And that's just really the way the the company runs. And I'm not sure if you're asking me if understanding the heart of the person that you're working for to, to to, to present a new idea of, hey, I'm good at this, and let me see how they receive it. Is that what you're asking? Mainly what I'm asking is, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to let it bake in for it to merge with the expertise. Some of that requires... Uh, Explain it, because I'm lost. Yeah, I mean, too. you know, you, you you come into a company... Give me an example, a real example. Okay, a real example. Um, let's say there's an individual that has an expertise to... I don't know, video, videography. Let's just say that's what it is. They do what they do well. They're fast at it. They they have the, um, the images and, and videos to you quickly. Sharp images period. But let's just say the topics that they highlight are just not quite, you know, they're, they're getting the full thing, but, but the clips, they're not quite capturing the heart of 
you know, and that's 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 within their job. Mm-hmm. But you need them to do that. They like skill sets. So a videographer with the well, in this company, you lack the proper skill set, right? So it's like saying someone has worked in fast food and their role was to put together a burger that came from the warehouse already seasoned. All you got to do is heat it up, put it on the bun, send it out to the customer. And now you want to go and work at Ruth Chris, where you actually have to prepare food. So it's like saying, I did a fantastic job. I was the top line cook for McDonald's. And now I want to come over and be the top line chef for Ruth Chris. You had a great skill set in the same industry at McDonald's, but this requires a whole different level of training. So if you want to be the top line chef at Ruth Chris, there's going to be some familiarity, number one, that you have to create with our company. And there's some training and there's some improved skill set that's going to be required in order for you to go from pre-made, pre-seasoned patties to a meal from scratch. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, even going the opposite direction, someone that's like a high-level chef, Mm -hmm. they're going to have a really, really hard time working at McDonald's putting that burger together. Yeah. Because they don't, like, they're just coming from the mindset of quality when this particular environment needs speed. Like, yo, you need to, like, you have to come up with a system where you can, like, knock these out because we got a bunch of, we don't Mm -hmm. have a thousand burgers being ordered right now at Ruth's Chris. Yeah. But we are making these burgers at McDonald's. And sometimes... We're coming from a different, let's say, like the movie industry. You're like, yo, we got to do it this way. And even though you bring us a, a, a level of skill set, that's not what we need right now here. I need like some good videos. You use your experience, but you still got to fit your skill set into the confines of the need of the company. Yeah. You know what I mean? And sometimes it's not, it's not about feeling the person. I don't know what I'm going to need until you say, this is a situation that's going to make us a whole bunch of money. There's a gap. And I'll probably say, go ahead, do it. Show me. Like you running a morning meetup joint, right? I'm like, yo, grow it. If it's growing, it's working. If it's not, if it's not growing, it's just, it's not working. Meaning you're not working. And you need to figure out different ways. Like, that's what I'm saying. You, you do the music. I'm like, try it out. If it's working, then let's, let's run it. However... The danger you fall into accepting a, an agreement like that, like it's cool working with a CEO of a small business that's really still in, in startup phase, right? Sure. Still a startup. <clears throat> it's cool to hear that and you get your hopes up. But then now as this CEO, as, as, as this entrepreneur is learning more things and he's in masterminds and he's seeing these other small businesses run their business with this level in, of execution and professionalism, it's like, hmm, what Kachif is doing is not enough. So the trouble that you run into is accepting that role without then also identifying what the metrics are that your your role will be measured on. So now, okay, I'll do it. I'll grow the morning meetup. But what does that mean? Growth by what percentage? Growth by what number? Growth by what level of engagement? Like those things need to be clear and then you're tracking them week by week in your team meeting so that your role is never in question. These are the metrics that we agreed upon. If we need to increase these metrics or decrease them, that's a different conversation. But you don't want to be looked at, again, generally, like his role was to grow the morning meetup. Let's say you grow it by 2%, but in his mind, 10% is the minimum that he's looking for. If we don't establish that. So to to that, um, which I I don't, I I feel like... (laughs) Like, it, it wasn't really about me. Yeah, sure. um, We're just using it as an example. Yeah. But um, I suppose, like, when I say heart, like, let's say an individual ha- has that angle. They have that drive to do it. They have the expertise to do it. But they're just, because they thought what was communicated was one thing. And this and this is just verbal communication. They, they may have the capacity to over-deliver spot on and hit it. But it's just off. Now, I do recognize that we can't be afraid to miss it, period. Mm-hmm. We, we, we can't be afraid to do it, get it wrong in the eyes of the CEO where, you know, I don't, like I'm not certain that it's an expertise thing. I respect what you just said. It, and it may be just an adjustment like, hey, I like that, but let's, let's, let's just redirect the trajectory in this area with that same intensity. Mm-hmm you know, with, with the heart that I'm in, envisioning 
you know, to impact these entrepreneurs. I think the word heart is the word that's confusing because there's no heart involved there. Like, this is what I need. For sure. <laughs> this sure. is the job, right? Absolutely. There's no, my heart isn't playing a factor in this. So based on what you're explaining, removing the word heart because heart is connected to feeling and emotion and we can't base our needs off of the feeling and emotion, right? This is the job. I think that there's probably an area of opportunity for maybe some training and development and then also an area and opportunity to build build that bridge through some good communication and finding out how how am I easily most easily best able to communicate with my CEO? How am I most easily able to communicate with my team members? And whatever that line of communication is, whether they require text messages, short messages, email, whatever that is, then you communicate. Here's what I see. Here's what I notice. And another good thing that someone who's on the team can really do is address your own area of lack. Like, hey, hey, CEO, this is what I'm doing right now. I'm feeling like I'm hitting the metrics, but not at the not at the level of intensity that I could be or that would best serve the company. Are there any training opportunities that are available? Or if I sign up for this training, is there any type of company reimbursement? You know, for most people, when you have that level of initiation, no, is that right? Initiate, yeah, that level of initiative. initiative yeah. When you have that level of initiative for a CEO that says, hey, he's willing to go the extra mile. He's looking to, 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 to go into continued education. All I got to do is reimburse him or pay for that class. He found the class. It's going to make me better. It's going to multiply our results by 5, 10, 20. That's hard to replace. That's hard to replace. I, I understand that. My, right. As far as the word choice, heart, that is, that is my choice of word choice, but the way you elaborated on it, it answered my question. Just that. Yeah, um, because like emotion, I wasn't, I mean, like heartbeat, like without a heartbeat, there's no blood pumping through the body. Sure. So it's not, it wasn't an emotion thing. So it's like logistic. Got you. But you see how that one word and that translates in how we do business and how people perceive you and your value and what you're saying. Because let's say you were in my office and you work for me and you come in with like, I'm trying to understand your heart. I'm thinking, oh my God, we got to get rid of him. Like, come on. Right. <laughs> I don't want to have these uncomfortable conversations. Do the job. I need you to understand your job. So sometimes it's just that one little thing, like you said the word earlier, adjustment. And oftentimes it really, when you have good people on your team, there's just going to be a series of adjustments. And as your CEO grows and he's making or she's making adjustments, I'm telling you what I know. You better be right next to him making your you cannot stay the same while your CEO is growing at an expeditious rate. You have to be making adjustments and tweaks and showing areas of growth too. 100%. And um, I think like back to like what me and Joe was talking about, like he's like generally just, just like get some stuff done. If I need it done, he'll just get it done. And there could be a specialized thing where he says, yo, this is what I'm focused on. I am going to build this. Let's say the, the Creators Clubhouse. I'm going to build it. You ain't got to worry about it, not only managing it, but growing it. And I'm like, yo, bet. Would that be like a specialized skill set you think you can manage yeah. or handle? Mm -hmm. Okay. But here's the danger of it. If I have to hire someone else, like for kind of like, it's at, at the end of the day, it's like an executive assistant, right? I need some stuff done and they get it done. Right. But if you're saying, I'm going to pull away from that and I am going to grow this business. And I'm like, okay, cool. No problem. And you start the process. If it doesn't grow, now we're in danger because I'm like, all right, well, what am I paying this person for? I love you, but it's not growing. And you can't no, just We don't go have back. any more income. You can't we just can say, like, hey, well, Yeah, I don't, I don't want to do that more. Let me just do all this other stuff again. <laughs> this wasn't good. Let me come back over here and start <laughs> being the catch-all again. For sure. Yeah, you got to be really, really solid. Yeah. And like you can't go into and and here's the thing, but it, it's a very dangerous game that it's you're a playing. Good conversation, isn't it? It's a very dangerous game that you're playing because you can't go into Coca Cola as the executive assistant and say, "Hey, I want to launch this new mango flavored Coke." And they say, "Hey, if you can grow it, you can grow it, make it happen." <laughs> it's just not how it works, right? You can work your way up to that department that maybe creates new offers. So 
So you also have to be responsible as a CEO and said, mm, I don't know if that's your wheelhouse. Like it's like you're you're throwing a very important part that you're expecting results in to someone who may or may not be skilled in that area instead of just getting someone who this is what they do. Sure. And if if Joe wants to grow in that area, let him train alongside that person. Yeah, I got that. I, I need to do something. I don't want to, I want to change out my hat, even though, what's the name of the brand? Crown Me. Crown. So I'm wearing the Crown Me joint now. What's the IG? Let's just, let's, 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 little, little black business spotlight right quick. K R O W N M E L L C. I'm going black. The black looks better, right? Look, look at me, Joe. Let me get the crown me. Mm. This is hard. Mm. My little outfit. Mm -hmm. Not my little outfit. Absolutely. So, what's the Instagram again? Crown me with a K. Crown me with a K. Hey, Donnie, take your hat off and wear this one. Not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll switch all my hats again. This hat is dope too. <laughs> Never let a win get to your head. Never let a loss get to your heart. Go ahead, show that one. <laughs> this one's hard. That but one's this, hard is, this is a different brand. What's, what's the brand? Defy the, odds. Defy the Odds. You know the Instagram? Defy the, odds Defy the Odds brand. On Instagram, that's how it's spelled. Defy the Odds brand. Okay, yeah. So, shout out to these black, black on. Now, take your hat off and just put it on. <laughs> It's a dope hat. It's a super dope hat. You look silly, but it's got two bills. Don't cock so, it, please. All right, let's. The let's, reason let's that I won't take my hat off and it's put obvious. on this. It's obvious. First of all, it's not like I'm not. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got this line going across my head, but I also first, have on makeup, and I don't want to get makeup got, on. Yeah, got gangster with it. First of all, I. I, I <laughs> Hey, there we go. All right, so yes, Crown Me Collection. Make sure y'all support these brands, please. Black owned businesses. Black owned businesses. Black we owned. love it. Okay, Where good. We going right there. Right there. Um, yeah, really good conversation, man. Just adding value. And here's where your money will always be controlled by is the amount of value that you add. So actually, I made a post a while ago. Was it inspired by something I said? Of course not. <laughs> um, what what was it? It says something like, um, "You feel you feel like you're not being paid what you're worth, but your employer doesn't agree." Ooh, you feel like you're not being paid what you're worth, but your employer doesn't agree. So I think, like, we always have to check our own um, value that we're bringing to something. And let's switch gears to relationships. I think I'm the best husband in the world, but let Dre talk to Donnie. And it's a different story because I think, oh, well, so she wanted to take trips and stuff. And I'm like, well, you plan a trip, we can go. Okay. But don't expect me to plan it. I got too much going on and I'm busy. I think me saying that is making her say, oh, my husband's so amazing. I just got to, let them know where we want to go and we can go. And th that ain't it. Mm -mm. She would much rather me say, yo, I plan this trip. Let's go. She'll probably take one of those a year over five trips that she has to plan per year of me taking the initiative, right? Mm -hmm. So I may think I'm adding a certain amount of value. Like, yo, yeah. <laughs> Anybody, you ever dated somebody and they say, you'll never find a man like me. You're like, oh. Every single last one of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they find and I man probably said better. that to every guy that I've dated. Like, you will never find another Donnie, and you won't. And look at them happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they are happy. <laughs> look at them living their life. <laughs> yeah, I, I but I only needed one to sure. know that he would never find another me. Aww. None of that. Let me tell you something. <laughs> You can you you can think that you are everybody is replaceable. Everybody. Now there are certain core values that you may have to make you uh, work with a person longer or work in a situation longer than you typically would. Right. So getting to the trip, David and I, uh, Andrea and I were going back and forth all day yesterday planning this couple's trip that we're about to take. Let me take some initiative real quick because I. That reminds me that I need to, because I, you know, that literally just happened today. And my wife was like, uh, what day you want to leave? I'm like, honey, whatever. I'm about to just tell her. This is initiative. Credit cards in the chat. All right. I ain't got to ask no questions. 
Okay. I want to invite you to pick my brain. Mine too. Mine too. Your too? Mine too. Your too. Okay, okay you guys. Brain. We are so excited because we just dropped our newest podcast series called The Brain Picker Podcast. David. Oh, it's going down. You get to pick our brain. You have a business idea, a concept. You're stuck. You can't get off the ground. You need the advice of seasoned, experienced entrepreneurs. Not only entrepreneurs that are practitioners, but we got a lot of people that we've been coaching all over the last decade. All over the globe. They got receipts. Not just that, you never know where your next investor might be hanging out and the word on the street is, we got all the connections. That's a big fact. We got all the connections. So if you want to sit down with us and pick our brains. In front of our audience. And we're letting you pick our brains. We won't even talk bad about you for doing it in front of our audience, bringing your business maximum exposure. Find the link somewhere around here, wherever you see it. It's there. And apply right now to pick our brain. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's get it. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, honey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to leave Monday. We're going to leave Monday afternoon. and We'll be there. We'll hang out. We'll kick it. I'm going to change the podcast that I'm doing on Wednesday to Tuesday morning, and we'll kick it the rest of the day. Wednesday, we open, come back to the house Thursday or Friday, whenever. Let's, we, that's our schedule. Oh my gosh, she is... You're about to get some points. She is melting right now. Are you now, serious? You let me mean? tell you the part that she's... So, let me, tell you, let me tell you where she's not melting. Hold on, hold on. And tomorrow, we're going to go shopping and get you some outfits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even be serious. Tomorrow, 2 o'clock. Be ready. <laughs> Check your calendar, Shans. Two o'clock, I meant online. <laughs> no, no, we're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> I meant Initiative. online. I gotta practice what I'm preaching. All right. Right? And these these are real audio messages that went. I so it's not me just capping. I actually sent them joints. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. hey, say that one more time. Good evening. What is it? Say that. What is it that you said um you were gonna do? You're gonna take initiative by what happened now? I don't understand what you mean. What did you just send Dre What's in a note? phone on my face? What I are you just, doing? Just, what are we talking about? <laughs> what did you just send Dre in a note? <laughs> oh, oh, I, oh, oh, oh. I told her the date, time we're leaving, and I'm taking her shopping so that she can be ready and comfortable for it. She ain't got to spend time looking through her closet. She's going shopping mm-hmm. tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Beat that. Yeah. I just forward that real quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Taking initiative. Let me let me tell you what these guys do. Right. So we're planning this couples trip. It's three couples. Me and Dre going back all day yesterday. She's sending me like audio books of voice notes, and we're like planning this out because the guys say, "Y'all plan it. Y'all put it together. We'll pay for it. We're all there. We're gonna have a good time. Cool." So we've been going back and forth for about a week and a half at this point, putting it together. First, it was supposed to be Jamaica. Our dates, like you got. Uh, a bunch of entrepreneurs in this group, our dates aren't working out. And so we end up saying, let's just, we only got a couple of days that are easy for us. Let's just go see the Usher concert in Vegas. Okay. The moment we just, I drop it in the group, the ladies have decided we're going to Vegas. We're going to see Usher. Here are the price of the tickets. The, I don't want to have anything to do with it. Well, why we got to go with those tickets? <laughs> why can't we go with the other tickets? Why can't we do this? Why can't we go on these dates? Why can't we Hold stay on, here? Quick, quick. Book the flights. First class. Now. They're $2,000 a piece. <laughs> For what? The flights. You saw them yesterday? Yes. I put it in the chat. <laughs> I put it in the chat. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> Later. <laughs> Later. <laughs> Later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he put his credit card away. <laughs> he was about to send a cute picture too. No, not right now. Oh god. Not now. Later. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, it's so frustrating. Like he tells me. Go ahead and get our tickets. Get our tickets. Okay, cool. So we have the option to choose from a certain ticket or another ticket that's double the price. When I say, hey, this is the price. Hold on now. Wait, wait. Are there any other tickets available? 
you interject yourself, and mm-hmm. this is all of y'all. Mm-hmm. You interject. You don't want to have anything to do with the process. Mm-hmm. But then when we create the result, you want to have something to do with that. Okay. That's not valuable. So there's a $900 ticket and there's a $500 ticket. The one person that's not paying for any of the tickets is really going hard on this $900 ticket. And I'm like, yo, five, we, and we're there's still good tickets. Like, we're still like close. And she's like, I want Usher to sweat on me. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, yo, just those five, we know all the songs already. So Listen, it's not why like, you gotta call me out? First of all, <laughs> I'm not the only person not paying for the tickets. None of the ladies are paying for the tickets. You know what my wife said? She said, oh, them five dollars tickets are fine. That's my boo. She didn't. She said that. <laughs> she said that to you. She's not going to say that to me. What she said to you? So here's the thing. Okay, so the way that the put us on both of us, the way that the stage is set. What are you doing? This is going to be Usher. This is going to be Usher. This is the stage. We have an opportunity to be over on that far corner over there of David's chair where we can get this angle here, but there's going to be a, a, some seats on the stage. So we may have a partially obstructed view. Even though it's floor seats, it's five, row back, five rows back, and there's this group of people that are going to be on the stage. Our view may be obstructed because we'll be right here. $500 tickets. This is now, too. we have the opportunity for $900 tickets right here. Second row. No obstruction. What are we doing? We're going it's to... It's Usher. We're going to Vegas. He is a legend of our time. We're going to Vegas. We've been to Vegas. We've worn Vegas out. I'm not trying to walk the strip. So I am going with so you're one not person. To hang, you're not trying to hang with your person. It's all about going to the concert. Mad days before and the day after. Well, and it's like... You probably should know that I have been asking to go to this Usher concert for about a year. Mm. I have been like, you got to take me to see Usher. You got to take me to see Usher. So now you we're... You got to take me to see Usher. You got to take me to the front row, right in front of Usher and the VIP and all that. What well, I, he, everybody already know how I get down. So what are we doing? We're going for best available. Okay, let me ask you this. Let's say, for instance, you're taking a first class flight out there. We are. Nice hotel. Eat Perfect. good the whole time. We're doing all of that. Sightseeing. Yes. I was going to spend some money out there. Mm-hmm. When you get back and you have been sitting sitting over there, are you going to get back and say, oh my gosh, those seats were just... It depends. Am oh I having my to, gosh. Am I having to look through the people who are sitting on stage? Yo, this is... Why? Because I could just wait till he come back to the club in Atlanta. This is the person that says to their kid that got all A's in one C, what happened to the C? Oh my gosh, I can't believe you got this C. That's terrible. You have to focus on all the stuff that is happening. Now I want to know what's up with this C though. I do. What's up with the C? Because... No. Here's an, like it's, it's either something that's going on with the A's or something that's going on with the C. Were you too challenged, over challenged, over leveraged, or were these A's just really easy? I want to know what's up so they're we can get best results. Who are you in the comments right now? I don't. The black woman. When have I ever started caring about a them? little bit? Because you be hitting me like, yo, my gosh, look at this. That's not but true. Anyway, <laughs> like <laughs> all the true. stuff that's going to be done for you and. No. Because the ticket is four hundred dollars cheaper. That is not. No, it has nothing to do with the price of the tickets. You guys, before you fix your mouth to comment, let me just say the that this already rolling in. this was not this was not originally a group trip. I have been asking for a year. Usher is one of my favorite male artists. I have been saying we got to see Usher. We got to see uh, like I have been begging for this concert. So the experience. This is for me. This is an experience for me. If you want, like, if you're like, I got to have this. um, I got to have, I got to get crown me. I got to get crown me. I really want crown me. And Dre just gets you a crown me (laughs) keychain. You know what? I just say. You're going to say thank you. But on the inside, you're going to be like, I really wanted the hat though. If you said, if you said. I want to go see Usher. My dreams would be in the front row, like right in the front. That's different. You well, said... Well, the no, thing is, that's how, said, we, that's how we do what we do. But you said... If it were just he and I going, that's the experience that he would position me with. Well, now I, I got wanna, these other people. 
Yo, and y'all, now I got these other people, Yo. and you want to take away from the experience that I am accustomed that is, to. That is, that's it. Well, that's a different conversation. Yes. Okay. So I want. If the you t- feel that strongly about it, then we run it. I can go ahead and say, "What's up?" I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe y'all sit in the front. We wait, sit over there. Wait, and then, we and get then together. EJ comes joins the chat. We're talking about. We're, the the debate at this point is front and center, second row, or over in the corner, fifth row. I wake up, I fell asleep, wake up, EJ then dropped in the chat. Oh, I found these tickets. Back there? <laughs> 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 what are you doing? Does nobody love Usher the way that I love Usher? Back there, for real. Uh, we're, now, we're in section 101. I think you're the exaggerating front. on the back there and it's the over it's there. The it's still a really good seat. It's in the 200. We're not even in the... We're not even talking... 200 of like 700. It's like, 200 or 400. It's 200 or 400. And while they would be decent seats, it's like, I love this. Who do you love like so much? Who's somebody... Life. No, 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 no. Who is a celebrity or a speaker or entrepreneur that you just love Jimmy so Fox. much? Jamie Foxx. Yeah, okay, now, th- so if it, was, Fox, if it was a Jamie if Foxx show, you want the whole meet and it would greet. be right in the front, yes. And 100%. the backstage meet and greet. You want all of that. 100%. For absolutely. sure, like, get off me. I want Usher right here. All right, well, say that. But from, I don't said act, that. No, don't, don't. You put it in there like, what do y'all want to do? And that's different. So if you're saying, these are the tickets we need, like, I really, really want these tickets, and, like, I'm an Usher fan. What's up with you? All right, anyway, can we get back to intentionality? Yo. Intentionality. We just agreed on front and center because Usher is who I have to see. I don't want to see him from an obstructed view. I don't want to see him through a crowd of people. Front and center. Let's book these tickets. what you say, there Dave? All right, I'm with it. Okay. All right, so, but... Let's get back to intentionality. Let's get back to I was just super and intentional. I didn't value. Yeah, that, that was super intentional. That was, Sometimes you got to take charge. If you'd have said, yo, these are the tickets that we're booking, send me the money. Can you? What do you want me to do? I need a credit card. You're not even paying for it. On, I'll pay for them if everybody sends you back so I can get my points. Well, those particular tickets we got to do separately because they're not sold in a group. They're no. just sold in sets of two. Okay. It was right, the cool. other whack tickets that were sold in a group. All right, group. we'll do it. We'll you do know it, the right. ticket's whack when you can get six of them. <laughs> gotcha okay all right cool uh okay i think we we'll say what we were going to talk about for next week we we will any questions or comments on this on this conversation guys oh crown me and defy the odds defy the odds this episode yeah. is sponsored by crown me and defy the odds yes I, I really do now you came in wearing this so i want a fresh one though you got it okay i want one too i need a fresh one never well, let a win because i see you your, had a bag Never let a win get to your head. Never let a loss get to your heart. Mm. This is mine. This is like this is like my mantra. Mm-hmm. In a hat, <laughs> oh, <laughs> so like the largest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I do wear you a medium. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> intentionality. <laughs> get your shine, man. Oh, nice. Are all of these meetings? First of all. Oh, you going to run out and get some? So you and going another time. Who else got stuff? You got stuff in the car. <laughs> you got stuff in the car. Yeah, let's let's just actually see. give them the mic real quick. Give them the mic real quick. Okay. Where's where's the mic? All right. So tell tell us about the brand, man. Since you since you here, those is hard. These so these are, are supposed hard. to be mine. For sure. Put that cover back on me, please. <laughs> oh, the corduroy crown me. Hard. Where's the hard. There we go. Wait. Y'all got to see, y'all see the gym working? Sit out. down. Sit down, Donnie. Okay, and then I also so, got, I feel like, that's hard. You know, how, you know how one parent takes you shopping for school and you got to come home and show the other parent everything you got? <laughs> <laughs> okay, track pants. Yes. Windbreaker pants. Okay. All right. Can and I got, my wife? only have no? one more thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Me and Dre can be twinsies. There we go. I like it. Yeah. I like it. All right, so tell us about the brand, man. So the name of the brand is Crown Me. It's a self-empowerment brand. It's fun us to be the great, great at whatever we're doing. Yeah. Oh, okay. The name of the brand is Crown Me. It's a uh, self-empowerment brand, inspiring people to be the best at whatever they're doing and knowing that we are all kings and queens. So cool. we look to inspire people through fashion. So that's pretty it. much the gist of it. I love it. All right, so um, 
Questions, comments, concerns on the conversation we just had? Oh, I want to, and then uh, you can uh, find us at Stonecrest Mall. We're on the second level across from H&M. We do have a, a flagship store there. And you can follow us online at Crown Me LLC, and that's spelled with okay. And we do have a, a website, Crown Me M. Oh, he said he's going to take the opportunity. Hey, sure. <laughs> we're going to do the All right, manage you. All right, go ahead. What you got? I want to say, there was a point in, there was a point in time that I worked in a surgical field, and there was a lady that knew everything. I'm talking about the replaceable thing. And they didn't have anybody that knew what she knew. So one particular morning, she was at, she actually got sick and she was out for the whole week. Mm. The surgery center was in chaos. So my question is, do you believe that you, sh even though somebody's saying they may be irreplaceable, that you should have somebody shadowing that person because if anything happens to them, what happens with the company? Absolutely. So not only should someone know enough of her job to get the job done, but this is where your SOPs, your standard operating procedures come in place, documentation in writing, documentation in video. There should always have been somebody who trained the person like in all seriousness on your staff level. There should not be there should always be a trainer who trained that person, someone who created those processes and those workflows. And if it is that person the first thing you have to immediately do is get all of that stuff documented because somebody can die, somebody can quit, somebody can go on vacation and the business still has to operate at a level of excellence. So um, shadowing can also, now here's the, the caveat to that is shadowing can make people feel uncomfortable. It can make your team member not operate at their best capacity because they don't want to teach someone else everything they know and they're constantly feeling like their replacement is looming over their shoulder which is why proper training and proper documentation of your processes, all of them, how do you clean your bathroom, how do you clean the surgical rooms are so important. For sure. Absolutely. Good question. Anybody else? I think you made some amazing points. Yes. <clears throat> I want to know... Or? <laughs> both of you all. Both of you all made some amazing points. Okay. Um, I want to know, Are you? does it matter what level the company is at? Does it matter how large the team is? going from particularly a catch-all position or having a catch-all teammate mm -hmm. to getting into specified skill sets and positions. Does that matter, like, if you have a team of four? Like, do you kind of need a catch-all if you, versus if you have a team of eight or mm -hmm. ten? Are you speaking from the, uh, the CEO or the team member? I'm speaking from the CEO identifying what their needs are for yeah. where they are in the development. So that's a great question. So you're going to be in different places um, in your business. And sometimes you could have a team of eight. David had like a team of people at one time that were all volunteering their services. And then as he grew, he was able to compensate them and now compensate them on full-time levels, right? Um, there's a lot of factors to come in determining a team. First thing that I would recommend that any CEO does at whatever level you're at, whether you're just getting started or you're a higher level, document everything that happens in your business. Every single thing that happens in your business, what has to happen to make money, what has to happen to, uh, for service, what has to happen with systems, all those things. And then circle the things right away that only you can do. Nobody else can do it. Nobody else can come and sit in this chair and do the Social Proof podcast be besides me and David, right? These are things that I have to show up for. But Securing guests for the Social Proof Podcast, like I help do that now, but I don't have to do that. Could we put somebody in position to do that? For sure. Well, do we have the budget to do that? Let's just say the answer is no, right? So in that case, we may say, hey, Joe, these are the people that I've identified. Can you just send the message, right? Joe can do it. He's going to send the message. It's going to be very hey, we want you on the podcast, but he's not going to be the best at answering any questions that they have and really fostering the relationship to make them eager. He's just doing what I told them to do. So we're going to keep him there until space has opened in my budget or it's a high enough priority over all the other things that have to be done to fill that position. The second thing that you want to consider is your budget. Um, you should not exceed 30 to 35% on the high end of your overall monthly revenue towards salary. So you have, and that includes your salary. So can I afford it? Is it something that is urgent? What's the urgency of it? What's the affordability? And you prioritize those things that 
you don't necess- that you need to delegate, right? You there's a need to delegate column. You prioritize which do I delegate first to relieve me of the most stress or that's income producing. I always recommend that entrepreneurs start with a role that's income producing. You bring somebody in in an income producing role. That way it creates more revenue for you to bring in a second and a third person. Mm-hmm. Solid. Solid. I love it. Yo, what's um, it, the... And like, just keep it. What makes someone like increasingly hard to replace is them bringing in money. Yes. Be somebody that brings in some money. It makes it a little more challenging to replace them. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's that's a specialized skill set, being able to get some money. Yeah. Right. But so actually, I was talking to uh, Naya. So we talking about doing some things and creating um, relationships with. brands or sponsors and stuff like that. And she's like, yo, I'm, I'm I'm doing the work. We're reaching out. I haven't had any hits yet. Do you want me to continue? And my answer was, I don't want you to continue for me. If you're doing it, if you're doing it for, because you want to bring in some income to my podcast, then you should just stop. But I want you to do it to acquire a skill set because once you figure that out, then there's like, all right, I could do it for you, Dave, or I could do it for somebody else, but I have the skill set. Then it's like, yeah, hold on. No, I, I, I need you. I, it's, it's hard to replace that. You know what I mean? She does a, a, a bunch of things for like helping entrepreneurs and things of that nature. Being able to um, be a role player in a company is very valuable, but it's easier to replace if it's not bringing in money mm-hmm. because money solves most ills in businesses, right? Like you can, if you have enough money and you have an issue, you can hire a consultant. You can like have the money to fix the issue or whatever. But um, if you acquire that skill set, or like like Joe was talking about this particular creative clubhouse, if you are going to bring in money to it, it may be a little harder for me to to let that go. Mm-hmm. You know, because not everybody's gonna go get the money. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If you're the only person, once you hit a certain level, so in the beginning of your company, maybe de- at least to your six-figure mark, you may be the only person creating revenue streams for your company and that's totally fine. And that could even go up to like a $250,000 mark, right? And I'm just using that as a mile marker. This is not to say at 250, you need to hire a team. It's just a marker. It kind of happened with me and my business. You can build your business as a solopreneur up to six figures. But then once you hit it, that 250 puts you in a different tax bracket. We got to start creating different streams of income. You got different issues, other things that you have to be concerned with. The more money you make, the more money you need to make, right? And so then it becomes a, a point, a perspective of if you're the only person in your company generating revenue, then you are just you away from the death of your business. You know, it's crazy. So that is, that's actually my position, like multiple millions to today. Mm-hmm. I'm the uh uh-uh. uh. I said no way because you're like at the seven figure mark. A hundred percent. Yeah. Multiples. I'm the only person that brings in money. Yeah. Because um, I feel that way now. The all, bro, it's, well, yeah, that was the not, same thing for me. Like yeah. I literally mm-hmm. was the only person to generate, but and 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 the novice entrepreneur would be proud. Like, man, I made it to this level by myself, right? Um, but it's. It's not anything to be proud. If it's you can L. do it, it's nothing <laughs> it's to be proud L. of. It's tough to manage. It's tough to keep up with. And if you can do it by yourself, imagine what you could do with an assistant who responds to those emails at night when you're worn out or anything. So you need to, if you like I said, you have to, you cannot be the only person on your team that generates income. But also I see a lot of CEOs because I, I coach a lot of entrepreneurs and they say, well, I want to hire, you know, an executive assistant how do I make them make money? Or how do, how do I monetize their role? You might not be able to. The right. executive assistant might just be handling executive level things, you know, finishing up details from revenue streams that you've created. Right. Every single role in your company can't be monetized, but they all have to be valuable. A hundred percent. I just recommend that when you're starting to hire, your right. first role should be revenue producing, period. So the way I've built it was... I'll go create in a stream of income and then I'll hire people to support it. 
Yeah. And then I go create another stream of income that I hire people to support it. Um, which it's not, it's not it's not bad. It's just you need a blend because you can't have a team of all revenue generators too. Mm-hmm. And then you have to keep chasing the money because you have to like you'll have a bunch of chargebacks and like you'll you'll start losing money because there's nobody to support it. Mm-hmm. So everybody's super valuable and. Like even some people that are supportive, if you're supporting to a level and you're managing certain things that the entrepreneur is bringing to the table and you are the glue that keeps all this together, that's increasingly valuable. Yeah. But you have to continue to grow with the company. You have to grow in skill set. So yeah. it might be not bringing money in necessarily, but let's say, for instance, somebody's running the, uh, I'll just say Reese, for example, because he does the... Um, the video. Or, uh, originally, he was like, yo, I just do video. I don't really do... I don't edit videos. I just I just shoot it. And I'm like, yo, why? What am I going to do with the footage? Or he's, he's like, yo, I have videos. And it, it, it's, a, it's a, a song and dance between two people of, I, this ain't how I want it. But he brings a level of creativity where I couldn't... It's not like I'm saying, yo, make it this way. He'll create a dope look. And I'm like, all right, well, tweak it this way. You made a video... And it had like a cuss word in the song. I'm like, yo, just take that out. And a part of this skill set is him being able to like, okay, cool, fix it, give it right back. That's a skill set. Mm-hmm. Not everybody can, we shoot something for the day and then you turn around and give me something. So he did some stuff yesterday. We did this, the Q&A joint with, uh, with Derek and he gave me a video. That, it doesn't make money, but that's hard to replace. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's hard. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the better you get it, something that's even supportive, makes you even harder to replace. But if what you're doing is just um, just support and it's reaction, the person does, I say, hey, Reese, make me a video. And then he makes a video. Hey, make me another one. And he makes me another one. Hey, fix it. And he fix it. That type of relationship, easy to replace. Yeah. Easy. Initiative. Exactly. 100%. Yeah. yeah. This was a good conversation. This was a really Probably good top conversation. five. This is top five right here. It had absolutely nothing to do with what we thought we were going to talk we about. We be trying, though. We be trying. We I don't trying. know why we even plan. We just sit down and go. We were telling uh, the studio audience, David and I, we never, ever know what we're going to talk about. And that's mm-hmm. the honest to God truth. Even to the point of like when we're going uh, for speaking engagements and things like that. Mm-hmm. Like we know an area, a lane that we'll stay in, but just word for word, being super prepared, never know. I like to also feel the audience oh, because sure. I can go and talk to a, a, a room of entrepreneurs where I need to be having a get started conversation. I could go into a, another room and talk about entrepreneurship where I need to be having a six figure conversation. And then I can go into a different room of entrepreneurs where I need to be having a seven figure conversation. So just understanding, you know, who your audience is and staying in the lane of the things that you're good at will make you good and and delivering great content like the Social Proof Podcast. Shout out to us being in the top 50 in America. That is big. Top 50 podcast? Top 50 podcast in America. All right? Let's get it. We just keep working, man. So um, this episode... We got some. We got some sponsors. We got sponsors. Today. Defy yeah. the odds. Defy the odds. Defy the uh, odds. Brands on Instagram and Crown Me Collections. Crown Me Collections. So, Crown Me LLC. It's not collection. That's the other That's brand. Me. Ooh, y'all have an issue. Y'all got an issue. Y'all might have an issue. Is it Crown it's Me? Spelled the same way. Or it's Crown Collection. It's Crown Collection. It's Crown Collection. And we have an amazing attorney. Yeah, we do Her that. name is Kendra Stevens. She is the trademark attorney. She is super dope. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Kendra is okay. our attorney. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right, well, uh, all right, man. All right, well, yeah, shout out to y'all. Okay, shout out to y'all. Moving right along. Here are our sponsors. <laughs> also, if you want to connect with me, you need to know how to take your brand to the next level, maybe get some coaching, some support and resources for entrepreneurship. Send me a text, 404-737-2767. You can just say, hey, girl, hey. You can say, Donnie, what do I need? And we'll be able to tell you. You can also go to sixfigureedu.com. That's the word six, S-I-X, figureedu.com. Absolutely. Shoot me a text, y'all. 404-737-4935. I would love to connect with you. We're sending out first dibs on all the stuff that I'm doing. We got a a podcast. There's a boot camp coming up, 12 hours of like working and figuring out. This is not for the beginner but the Grow Your Podcast and Monetize. We are like really, really locking in on that. So the this, we only have 50 seats, 
But my text list gets it. Well, morning meetup gets it first in my text list and then social media. So you want to be a part of uh, my text list. So 404-737-4935 and also the morning meetup. So all the people here are in the morning meetup. The reason we're talking about this brand right now is because my brother here is in the morning meetup. We just show love out here. All right. So um, thank you all so much. Please like, subscribe, share this podcast with your friends, family. Did we do a good job? What's that uh, sound on Instagram? Girl, you did a good job. You did. I never. Anyway, whatever. All right, we're out of here. We're out of here. <laughs> <laughs>